I've been looking at productivity apps for well over 10 years. Pretty sad. But I have a fairly good feel of where the market is. But over the last couple of years, it has become extremely difficult to categorize them, to truly understand what they are, because they're becoming these monsters, these hybrids of productivity apps. In today's video, I'm gonna take probably about 30 or 40 apps, and I'm going to categorize them into what I think the productivity app market looks like. So we're using Miro today as our official whiteboard sponsor. If you're interested in checking out Miro, you can find the link in the description. It's great for collaborative teams and bringing ideas together, whether you are hybrid or remote or in person. So here we are with the board that I've set up. Now this was pretty difficult to make. Now what I'm gonna do is first show you the categorizations and then we'll start dragging them in. So up here we've got tasks and I've separated tasks into just regular task management and also planner. Planner is sort of more advanced task management with a little bit of hand-holding and assistance. We'll show you a few of those apps that are sort of ranking in that category. Calendar is very much the same. We've got basic calendar experiences that people know and love already, but then we have new sort of AI schedulers, ones that can organize, coordinate, and plan meetings with other calendar applications. Now we're also looking at notes. Notes has taken a dramatic turn over the last five years. And what I mean by PKM tools here is personal knowledge management, some more advanced setups that typically include backlinking and graphs. And finally, we have projects with an all-in-one section and solo projects down here. Solo projects, much more suitable for those who are working in very, very small teams or with freelancers. Now you're probably wondering, what's this like, bit down the side, hybrid. I call it hybrid because some of these apps that may not fall under directly these categories, and I sort of call them hybrids, although they all eventually do fit under these. But the world is becoming a very messy place with productivity apps. Okay, so let's dive in. Um, as you can see here, um, I've got them all, uh, all over here, and I'm gonna start with a very simple one. And we're gonna start with basic task management apps. Now, we've got any do here. We've got Todoist as a sort of staple to-do list applications. Now, what I'm gonna do is drag in the first of the planner applications. This is Motion, it's been growing in popularity because it has a planner with a calendar and AI functions that allow you to plan your day. Now, you'll notice a difference. Task management applications are typically a rough price of around five to $10 at the maximum end per month. But when you look at planner applications, they tend to be in the range of $15 to $30 a month, which is going to be the typical pricing. And that's purely due to some of their machine learning abilities and some of the structures and the clientele they're trying to go after. So Motion sits under there, and so does Sunsama, one that I use, and it's more of a mindful version of Motion with less machine learning abilities. Now, we'll come back to this section because we're gonna jump over to Calendar. Now, calendar applications are becoming pretty, we've got Fantastia, which is a pretty good bet in the market. We also have Google Calendar, which is one that everyone knows and loves already. But we're starting to see the rise of apps like Reclaim, and I uh, will find them here, and Clockwise, that are AI schedulers. And these are primarily focusing themselves towards teams at the moment because they do better with team knowledge and data at being able to organize specific meetings. But we're going to see this feed into the personal calendar market in the next couple of years, allowing AI technology, ones that can understand the events that you put in and other people's calendars, allowing you to move and schedule your day around more suitably for your own lifestyle and for the other person's lifestyle. So Reclaim and Clockwise, interesting sort of growth market in the calendar space at the moment that I think eventually will feed into this audience. So we have note-taking applications. Let's start with some of the staple ones. We have um, Ample Note and Notion. Now it's weird because I sort of want to put Ample Note in the hybrid market and also PKM market. It's a tough one because it also does tasks and it also does calendar, but I'm sort of gonna keep it here for now. Um, why have I put Notion in there? I mean Evernote. We'll save Notion for later. Uh, where are you, Evernote? <laughs> Let's get Evernote up. <laughs> Whoa, dominance. 
<laughs> Bending spoons is going to be so happy. <laughs> So we are going to pop this note-taking one here. We know that Evernote is a pretty strong, strong, awesome application in the market and people know that and love that already. And same with OneNote, a good staple. But we're seeing PKM tools rise in the last couple of years and I'm going to select PKM tools as LogSeq, Obsidian, all great sort of PKM tools. And I'm even going to put an app like that is much more student-focused like RemNote in here. RemNote is more of a student focused app, but it has the same principles of being able to link stuff up manually inside of your experience. Now, as you can see here, I'm starting to get other applications like agenda notes. They blend tasks and notes together. Do they belong in hybrid? Probably. I'm gonna put them here for now, but we'll come back to that. And the same with super notes. Super notes, I'm gonna stick in notes for the moment, but they have some other abilities which sort of extend them outside of the productivity range. Let's jump over to projects. Now, traditional project management tools sort of align themselves with apps like Asana and Trello. We've seen these applications in the past do pretty well on the market, but we're starting to see a rise in the all-in-one space that has been pretty much dominated by Notion, but Coda is also a very strong player in the market that I'm surprised Google has not yet bought. However, a really dominant factor. Now we're seeing these solo project management applications come out of the woodwork in the last couple of years. Now we could say that task management is solo project management. These are more housed under um, sort of freelance organization of your business, whole all-in-one type applications. And we're seeing them in a space that also allows you to do, for example, like Miele Note allows you to coordinate just your creative board management, but also connect with your team and that side of stuff. So, Again, Note falls under projects as well, so it's very interesting. But Bonsai, I think I've got the right logo for this one. Bonsai is another one like Honeybook that allows you to do that. I feel like this is a bit of rambling, but we're gonna narrow this down a little bit further now. So an application like Routine would again be a planner application. It has a lot of traits of task management, a lot of traits of solo projects, but it sort of falls under the planner management experience. Now. Note plan really would fall under note taking, but it's got such an ability inside of it that allows you to plan tasks and calendar, which allows me to put it in hybrid. And that's where I feel like some of these applications are falling through. We've seen agenda notes available for notes and tasks and bringing those two concepts together. Um, and we've seen agenda notes as an application that blends calendar and notes together. So it's interesting to see how this market is evolving. I'm gonna put super notes under why have I got two super notes? I'm gonna put um, a mem under notes as well, although I really find it complicated where this application stands in the market because it sort of lives in the all-in-one project D space, note space. It's very strange where it falls under at the moment. The same with Craft, it's a very similar type of application, but I would say Craft fits under notes or personal documentation. I'm trying to keep this very simple because it's important to be able to understand the market as a collective. Now, we're also seeing AkiFlow being a popular planner application and Microsoft To Do being a pretty great staple task management application. And we've also seen um, both ClickUp and uh, Monday being those applications that do well in terms of being the go-to flexible project management solutions. Now, also we've got Daybridge, again, this doesn't fall in the AI scheduler's abilities and it's same with its very much rival at the moment, AME. Same with task management, TickTick -tick also falling under that category. And this is a strange one again. We're seeing these applications like Session, um, even like Llama Life that are sort of task management-y but don't actually fall under many categories because they are more of a focused timer application. So it doesn't really come under any of these at the moment. So that's a little bit of an idea of the project management app market. Obviously this can be built on, but it gives you a few examples of what's there at the moment. Tasks is split into two, basic to-dos and planners for planning out your day more effectively, giving you a guided tour around your day. 
calendar for events and meetings, but with AI schedulers being on the rise. We also have notes that has PKM tools for the more advanced note taker, and finally projects with a basic project management experience and an all-in-one to offer you more collective and flexible solutions. Now, an interesting market to say the least, We'll expand on this in another video in the near future, but hopefully it gives you a better idea of what the core market looks like for productivity apps. Anyway, a big, big thank you for watching today's video. If you're interested, please do subscribe. Thank you to Miro for creating this fantastic software that allows me to do this as a demonstration whiteboard experience. You can find the link in the description if you want to get them and download them after this video. Thank you very much, folks, for stopping by. I love to have you here, so do make sure you are subscribed and I'll see you in a future Keep Productive video. Cheerio, folks. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you're interested in checking out some more, you'll find them here and also you can subscribe to as well. It'd be great to have you here to optimize your tool. And if you're interested in our new email newsletters or our Bento application, or even Tool Finder, which is a new tool that we've created to help you find the perfect productivity tool, you can find it linked in the description.